making all of the Diablo 3 builds in hardcore. Uh, it's a very hard project. This is just going to be the best that I can do. I've probably consulted about 25 or more people on this, and this is kind of an average of what everyone's opinions are. And it's going to be based off of a good player with good gear. So obviously if somebody has like the best gear in the server or awful gear, that would change it a little bit. So yeah, uh, me and Potato are just going to do the best we can to kind of describe this and get it ranked for you. And I'll go, I'll go ahead and let you uh, introduce yourself, Potato. Uh, okay, I'm Potato. I played Diablo 3 a ton, like 2,300 hours, and I've got three level 100s and a high-level wizard, so I've kind of tested pretty much every build on the chart. So I can kind of give some insight as to each build. Yeah, and didn't you have like three Paragon 100s? Yep, I do. Cool. So yeah, and that's why I had Protato come along with me just to give me some insight on the builds that I haven't done because I've done Barbarian, Witch Doctor, and Monk, and then the ones that I haven't done, he's done. So I guess we'll just jump right into it and we'll start with kind of the worst builds. And it looks like the Cluster Grenade Demon Hunter graded out as the worst. Do you want to kind of shed some light on that? Honestly, Demon Hunter is the one class that I haven't really played at all, so mm -hmm. I can't really... <laughs> well, and I talked to some Demon Hunters to help me get those numbers, because I didn't have a lot of expertise with the Demon Hunter either, but it seems like they really struggle with the safety because of their low EHP, and they're more of a low MP kind of farmer, because they really struggle in the Ubers and the high MP. Yeah, I think... Um... The Spike Trap and the Cluster Grenade builds are both the only builds they can really use a pa pass like MP5. And from what I've heard, Cluster Grenades works really well with a CM Wizard, because when everything's standing still, they're constantly throwing grenades and getting tons of hatred to just throw tons of clusters. Mm -hmm. But if everything's running all apart, uh, grenades have kind of a small little radius, and it makes it really hard and dangerous. Yeah, so maybe an idea for the Demon Hunter would be to buff the range on their cluster grenades uh, to make them more viable, or to give Demon Hunters kind of an EHP upgrade, like uh, like a passive skill or or some you know different gear sets that help them be more survivable. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I think so. And I think uh, cluster grenade build, you should stack lots of life on hit, because grenades has a really high proc coefficient, and use a fast weapon like a calamity, because that high proc coefficient will constantly proc marked for death. So it's a really good group build. Like, if you have a Cyclone Monk and a CM Wiz, a Cluster Grenade build would be pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then, moving up the list a little bit, it looks like, if you want to talk about Monk for a little bit, because they seem to grade out pretty in the middle, uh, tied for fourth and then sixth. So um, Monk seemed to be a good kind of mixture of DPS and low MP and high MP. They're kind of like good at everything. They don't really have a weakness. Yeah, that's true. I I think if you want to, especially with the extra XP for group games now, it's kind of really important to have one good monk in every group. It's so important. Like, there's nothing you can do to replace Overaw and Cyclone. Since mm -hmm. pretty much every class, like everything listed on here are high damage AoE skills, and the monk just sucks everything together and makes everything take 48% more damage. So I think it's really important. Uh, I don't know. Even though monks didn't get rated too high on here, I think they're really, really good. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's so uh, you know this project was so difficult because it, it can be so arbitrary. I mean, if you ask a hundred different people, a hundred people have different opinions. Yeah. So you know, this is designed to kind of help somebody look and say, okay, I want to do a class that's really safe and good at solo farming. So then you can kind of look to see how the numbers shake out and go, yeah. oh, okay, maybe I should play a Barbarian. Yeah. And um, with the Monk, the two types of builds on here, I think the Wave of Light Tempest build is really only for solo. Like, if you use a Wave of Light in a group, everyone's going to hate you, because every time it hits, all the monsters spread out. Mm -hmm. That's true. And it's kind of like using an Echoing Fury. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's like the opposite of Cyclone. So, But it's awesome for solo, because everything dies in one shot anyway. And you can just fly through it, so. Cool, and let's talk about Wizard for a little bit. It seems like, on average, they graded out pretty low, and that seems to be because they are really specialized. They have a, a specific purpose to their builds. They're not really a jack-of-all-trades. They're more kind of like a master of one. 
Yeah. Is that fair to say? Because, like, CM whizzes are really good for, like, Ubers and high MP because they freeze everything. But it's kind of tough for them to, you know, farm low MPs and play solo. And they're not all that safe because they're really vulnerable to Frozen, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, to play a CM whiz in hardcore, it's really expensive. I might even put the cost at a rating of a 1 because you really have to hit that 2 point at least 2.55, I think it is, maybe 2.5, but it's much more ideal to hit the 2.74 breakpoint to freeze more. Mm-hmm. And you're spending so much money on the wizard, but then even after that, there's not really a good way to do a ton of damage and still be good for your group. Like, if you use the, the bubble build, you know, the yep. gr- group damage buff, down. and a freeze, that leaves your Oling damage dealing skill as uh, Twister which barely does any damage, and you've spent like billions on gear and you're not doing much damage for yourself, but if you have a really good group, then it helps everyone a ton. Yeah. So like when I made my wizard, it got a little boring after a while because I'm like, I'm not doing tons of damage myself, but I was playing with good people, so it was still really helpful to the group. So it's all preference. Like If you like playing support in video games, uh, CM Wizard's a really nice class to play. Yep, and you heard Protato talk about the, the cost. It kind of throws you for a loop because... Like, you know, if something's really expensive, the cost number is going to be low because low expensive is bad and low number is is bad. So if it's a really expensive class to play, that number is going to be low, and that's why a whirlwind bar and a CM whiz both score really low in cost because it takes so much gold and gear to get the pieces. And why do you think that is? Why do you think, on average, people thought that whirlwind bar and CM whiz were the most expensive? Just because they're both based on crit chance and attack speed to hit the proc coefficients and be able to run the build smoothly. So that means you have to be buying those crit mempos, crit lacunis, really good ice climbers, towels chests, all super expensive items like trifecta rings, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. There's no real... You can make a, a budget whirlwind bar, but I think it's really hard to make a budget CM whiz. Mm-hmm. And it looks like... Uh, Witch Doctor and Barbarian graded out on average to be kind of the best classes in hardcore. It looks like Witch Doctor actually was had the number one build with Zombie Bears, and then Barbarian was right there with Hoda and Whirlwind. Do you uh, kind of agree with that, or what's your insight on that? Yeah, I think for hardcore that's that's good because they're both so survivable. Like just Barbarians have tons of EHP overall. And you know, obviously, if you're running Perma Wrath, which pretty much everyone should, if they're doing a Whirlwind or Hoda build, it's just so safe. Like unless you DC, there's no way to get CC'd by anything. So as long as you're careful not to get walled in a corner or sit on arcane beams, there's like really no way to die. Mm-hmm. And for Witch Doctors, Spirit Vessel just saves your life all the time. I proc Spirit Vessel like over 20 times and not even worry <laughs> about it. So <laughs> and and Spirit Walk to boot. I mean. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, and it's on, and it's constantly off cooldown. It's not like it has a forty-five second cooldown. You can yeah. pretty much spirit walk whenever you need to. And I know not everyone uses it, but for me, just horrify is so huge because as a witch doctor, your resistances are usually super high to begin with. So to buff your armor by double and constantly have it off cooldown, it lasts eight seconds and doubles your armor. So it's pretty much always up with grave injustice. Mm-hmm. It just, it's just huge. Like. You go from killing yourself on reflex damage to doing no damage at all when Horrify's up, at least for me. Yeah, when I do Ubers, I always switch to Horrify instead of Soul Harvest. Yeah. So it's just really good for Hardcore to be really safe all the time, but still do a ton of damage output. Mm-hmm. So we've kind of worked our way up from Demon Hunter to Monk, Wizard, Witch Doctor, and now Barbarian. And it looks like overall in Hardcore... Barbarian did great out to be the best. They don't really have a bad build, it looks like. Everything kind of, you know, and in hardcore, being safe is very important. And it looks like Barbarian right now does kind of have the average best rank of damage, safety, EHP, and being good at all things. Um, Is there a certain style of the Barbarian that you think would be best to play on certain things? Or do they all kind of have viability in all areas? Um... I think when you're playing in a group, uh, a lot of people don't really like playing with Barbarians just because they're so fast, they get ahead of the group. And for when I would play with CM Wizzes and Monks, 
uh, since I was always slightly out of the group, I would hit the elite pack first and make them use their abilities so the CM was couldn't get in there and freeze before they used any abilities. Mm -hmm. So you have to really be conscientious of who you're playing with, and if you're playing with a CM was try to stay back a little bit, let them aggro the elite packs, and then do your damage mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, I think... Overall, it's really nice to have Shout for your group, but it's not as important anymore with the nurse that Inferno have gotten. Mm -hmm. uh, but so, at the same time, people play on higher MPs now. Yeah, like, that's true. I, like, like three true. months ago, everybody was playing MP1, MP2. Now everyone's playing like MP5, MP6. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I know one really nice thing to do for a Whirlwind Barb, if you're playing in a group, uh, if you use a cold SOJ, your party's going to love you just because everything is always slowed and chilled. Mm -hmm. So it's that's one option to just add an extra bit of support. But yep. um, yeah. Uh, one question I had about Whirlwind Barb is: um, should you be trying to get attack speed on every single piece? I mean, obviously besides like your shoulders and boots. But like one thing a lot of people run into is Lacunis versus Crafted Bracers because Crafted Bracers usually are a massive EHP upgrade to Lacunis. Yeah. Um, so is that kind of a trade-off that you can you lose that eight percent attack speed, nine percent attack speed, or is it like too valuable to whirlwind? You really need to just pay attention to your tick brackets on each hand. So if you're able to move up to crafted bracers and like either IK boots or move speed ice climbers, then it's definitely worth doing it if you're not moving down a tick bracket on both hands. Usually it takes like three to four attack speed items, or maybe three to move up a tick bracket, so mm -hmm. if adding lacunis doesn't move you up a tick bracket, then by all means, use Crafted Bracers. Mm -hmm. and, and when you have Whirlwind, you have two different, you have two different um, attack speeds. You have like, like a 2.7 with your main hand, and like a 2.5 with your offhand. So d you have two different proc coefficients, right? Um, well, the proc coefficient... It's it's basically the speed, the how many times your tornadoes tick per second. The proc coefficient's the same on the tornadoes; they just tick more the faster your tick bracket is. So, and basically, when you swing with your right hand next time you sprint, that's how fast your tornadoes are going to be ticking, whatever that that uh, tick bracket is. Mm -hmm. But when you when you whirlwind, you never know which hand swung last. So that's why it's really important to pass those brackets on both hands because there's no way of controlling which hand you ended up with when you whirlwinded. Well, I noticed like while you're whirlwinding, if you keep your details tab open, the number constantly switch like two point seven, two point five, two point seven, two point five. Right, exactly, because you're spinning and constantly switching hands. So whatever you end up with, or whatever. Whatever the last hand that swung, when you hit sprint, that's what your proc coefficient on that next set of tornadoes is going to be. Or not proc coefficient, your tick rate. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to explain really quickly, but if you just look up the tick brackets, you'll find lists of exactly what attack speed you need to pass that next rate. So if, like, say that, say the, just for example, the break point is like 2.66, just guessing off the top of my head. Do you, right. Now, you need to be 2.66 with both hands. You can't be like an average, like have one hand be 2.7 and one hand be 2.6, right? Because it's not an average of the two numbers. It's No, the then numbers. they would both be 2.6. But you can have one hand in one bracket and one hand in the next bracket higher. Yep. Like I know on my barb, I had one hand at exactly 2.55 and one hand at exactly the one higher. And they were always exactly equal when I added attack speed. So I tried to keep them both right at their brackets. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Cool. Yeah. I just wanted to shed some light on that quick because I know people ask me a lot about the whirlwind uh, bracket points and the attack speed yeah. and all that. And it works the stuff. same way with a CM Wiz, but it's a lot easier because there's only one weapon yep. to think about. Yeah, you're not sitting there constantly changing the number. Right. Cool. Well, I I guess uh, yeah, we can just throw some uh, concluding thoughts on this. Uh, as far as you know, hopefully this helped you guys out there if you're trying to pick your next character. Or maybe if you're new to hardcore, this will help you kind of look at what you want to be good at. And you know, like, like if you're a player who's broke or new, you might look at the cost and you might want to pick a class that's got a, a higher number because that means it's cheaper. Or if you're you're rich and you just want to be really good, and you might look at this and just pick the class that has the most high numbers. Or you can have fun with it and throw some uh, throw some comments or discussion my way, and and I'll gladly respond to you. Um, 
But yeah, this was really tough to do, and I just did the best job I could on it, and Potato helped me out a lot, so shout out to him. Do you have any uh, final comments on the on the chart or anything, or anything to add? Um, yeah, I think the only thing is think about what classes your friends play when you decide which class to pick, because there's a lot of combinations that work really well together, and just looking at this chart, this was kind of based on not knowing who's in your group. Mm-hmm. But say you already have like a witch doctor who does lots of damage as a friend that you play with a lot, but that you don't have any friends that are monks. You would be really beneficial to your group to make a monk and speed up all your runs. But if you already have a monk you play with all the time, then it would be beneficial to pick a DPS class or a barbarian. So just think about that when you decide what character to make, too. I guess on, on that note, one last thing. What, what do you think is the best party? Like, the four builds or the four classes. If you were going to design, like, the perfect party to farm, what would it be? Um, <laughs> maybe definitely one Cyclone Monk with overall, one CM Wiz, and then two heavy DPS classes. So maybe one Hoda Barb and one Witch Doctor. Yeah, so a Cyclone Monk, a CM Wiz, a Swarm of Bats, Witch Doctor, since everything's going to be frozen in a tight little circle, and a Hoda Barb to give shout and do damage to that tight little circle too I think that's a really smooth group and Mm -hmm. with really good gear you can just blow through high MP really quickly with a group like that yeah I pretty much agree with that Um, okay cool well that's going to do it hopefully this uh, helps some of you out there and if you disagree or if you agree let me know it'll be a fun discussion to have so I will say goodbye and I'll let Potato say goodbye as well yeah thanks for having me you bet take it easy guys thanks for watching